Hi guys, <clears throat> so we're here today, we're back, and today I wanted to uh, look at some games of uh, Tarish, Siegbert Tarish, one of the greatest players, late 1800s, early 1900s. He was uh, <coughs> second best behind Lasker. He played Lasker for the World Championship, early 1900s. Maybe we'll see one of those games. And, uh, yeah, he was, um, he was, uh, we saw some of the Steinitz of our previous videos. We saw, we discussed Steinitz, and, uh, Parrish took some of the ideas of Steinitz. Bishop Hair, um, some positional ideas, and, um, he made them more accessible. He, he was, uh, he made them more accessible to, Steinitz was a little bit far out, how we explain, uh, and Tarish made it a little bit more accessible to the common player. He also was a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more uh, um, uh, peace activity, maybe you could say like Morphe. Um, so we'll see, we'll see some a couple of his games, maybe one or two games today, and discuss how he's using color ideas. And here we are. Okay, so E4, we start, yeah, we can start from here. E4, light brick. His opponent's name is uh, Joseph Noah. E46, light, a little bit of light. D4, <coughs> both controlling light squares. Uh, well, here we have light, now we're controlling dark as well. D5. Uh, black is creating a mini bishop. Black is building a mini bishop. And knight C3, protecting, protecting the pawn. Okay. Knight of six. And both sides are fighting for the light squares. Okay. E5. Mini bishop. Black is white's making a mini bishop. In the center. A little bit of dark. Knight e seven. This game we're gonna see a nice space advantage. White has already a space advantage. We'll see how space advantage goes well with colors, how we could merge the two. Okay, I'll use the two together. All right, mini bishop, 92, why 92? The idea is because he wants to keep the, the pawn structure, the mini bishop. He wants to be able to prepare with c3. He's very comfortable rebuilding, rebuilding, um, keeping the mini bishop on dark, rebuilding dark. c5, black, the best way to break pawns is with pawns, mini, uh, he's a, we say like a bulldozer brick. This is a bulldozer brick for, for, for black, I'm trying to knock down these pawns. And white uh, continues with c3. Okay, here we are. Knight c6. Putting pressure on Mini bishop. F4. And both sides are clearly fighting for dark squares. Okay, that's clear. He takes, pawn takes pawn, and pawn takes pawn. Both sides again. These dark squares are really important. Both sides are kind of trying to fight. Notice how then both knights are on light, which in turn protects dark. Attacks dark. Alright, fair enough. This should be for check. He checks. <coughs> Alright. How would you do? There's not much choice. You you protect with a bishop, block with a bishop. Here's the thing. What about if what if black trades? Black white takes back with a queen. Who benefits from that trade? Well, first of all, we say in general chess literature, the bad bishop. There's a bad bishop because the pawns are on. Well, this was actually uh, white's bishop. Black's bishop is a is a bad bishop. White's bishop is a Again, sorry, black's bishop is a good bishop. White's bishop is a bad bishop. Because it's blocked by the pawns. Black's is not blocked. It has some truth, but I think in general, the colors is the main focus. And here, black's bishop is necessary for harmony. He has pawns on light. So he needs the dark bishop. White, on the other hand, has pawns on dark. He doesn't need the bishop. 
if he were to trade, if this trade would happen, white still has harmony of mini bishop and light bishop. Dark mini and light and big light. But black would have light bishop and mini light bishop. Not enough harmony. Too much light, not enough dark. Black is saying, you know what, you can trade, but I want to get the check in. White develops, protects the pawn. Notice has a lot of energy on dark from both sides. White is trying to make these pawns become bugs. Black is solid. Again, this is actually interesting. Black is solid on light squares. But he doesn't have that much dark. He's trying to use his solidity on light to be able to relax on light and send all of his energies onto dark. He's trying to topple the dark. Sometimes I call that light le dark leverage. When you have a lot of one color, it gives you leverage for the other color. He's not going to succeed. Let's see. Bishop takes. Okay, fair enough. He takes. Queen takes, of course. Queen David, too. And again, if the queens get traded, white's happy. Black is just, just says, you know what, if you trade, you trade. I wouldn't rush. You know, if you rush, it's a little tricky. What happens if you rush? Knight's getting in there. And then what? Then the king here. Maybe check. And <laughs> this is an interesting variation. Think about this now. Looks like you boot the knight. Let me ask you guys a question. What color is more important here? <coughs> well, by definition, the dark is. Because neither side has a dark square bishop. It's rare. Both sides have a light bishop. Neither side has a dark, which means that, black, that dark is rare and important. Both sides are striving for harmony. Let's see. King is acting as... Dark square bishop. Okay, black plays here. <laughs> and white goes, attacks the knight. This is not happening in the game. This is a variation I'm thinking about now. And this is really interesting. Normally you would say black would have to move back, but I don't think so. Again, this is clearly the fight for what color? For dark. What can black play? the answer is I mean there's probably a bunch of things you could just you could just develop and if you take the take back and then the energy on dark oozing dark energy oozing energy and it's like black is somehow way more comfortable than 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 uh, than uh, white would like it to be. it's nice for terrorizing the rook comes here you actually just lose all right so what does that tell us the trade the trade of Queens is good but take your time Nice c3, no rush, no rush. Okay. Alright. Rook d8. Improving the rook. Alright. Knight b5, he gets the knight in to d6. Beautiful outpost. We say with the knight, let's see if you guys can remember. Knight in the sixth rank, if we, if we see, have we talked about this yet? If we have, great. If not, maybe you guys have heard this. If a knight in the sixth rank, what what the, what's the saying? If you have a knight in the sixth rank, you can go to sleep and the game will win itself. Okay. <coughs> That's a nice quote. I think it's Tartakover. All right. Knight b5, trying to get the knight to go, take a little nap. Bishop david 7. Here we are. Knight d6, trying to get that. We get the rest. I get the knight strong. Very powerful knight here. All right, rook b8, protect, attacking the pawn. He's protecting. Rook c1, very patient. Just building. Look, look, notice the, the space advantage here. He trades. Take with the king. Again, the endgame of king activity is, is, is so huge. And improving the king. Here we are. Also, we can say the king acts as a dark builder. All right, knight c8. Why? He's trying to trade knights. You know, we might, if we were white here, we don't want him to take and give us a bad pawn. We'd lose that pawn. Probably. So, we might trade, but 
No, when you have more space, keep the pieces to, to, to use the, the squares available. The dark squares particularly, we're going to look on them further and further. So night back, later on, the night will have more of a say. Keep the pieces, keep them crowded, keep them crowded. Knight c3. Bishop David 3. Good energy, good harmony. The pawn's on dark. Pieces on light. <coughs> Rook c8, and here we are. B3, why B3? Little by little, if it, it, what it really might wants to do is play pawn here and here to get control of the dark squares. Again, he has a light bishop. So he's going to try and make his pawns be mini bishops. White plays here. Well, if he plays here, then there's weaknesses here in knight a5, very annoying. Knight a5, getting into the light squares. While building harmony, be careful, don't, don't rush. Sometimes you have light, but you want to build a little bit more. b3 first, okay, and then later he's going to play a3 at some point. Okay, knight b4, now he wants to take the bishop. You know, it, it's kind of interesting. I want to hear you, you guys, you know, maybe you guys can think a little about this. And just we'll pause here. The question will be, does white mind the trade? The natural move, bishop be one, but it really does he mind the trade? Take a moment and I want you guys to think about it, then we'll, we'll, we'll discuss. And what we're going to say here is that white does not mind. In fact, white played a3. He does not mind the trade because... The knights are very, very effective here. And by allowing the trade, black would gain... What would happen color money? He would gain... Black would gain light. White would gain dark. Again, the bishop is 1,000 light. The knight is 500 light, 500 dark. <coughs> Which means, by having this trade, white's losing 500 light, Gaining 500 dark. Now, how important is black's light? He has a, he will have the golden bishop, but you know what? It's not that effective. There's not much to do with it. And more importantly, black will have no harmony. So much light, but no dark. Already he has no, no all the pawns on light. And now he has a dark deficit. Again, white will be up on dark. These two knights will terrorize him on the dark squares sooner or later. Black doesn't take. Fair enough. B4. Now, and now, white pushes. You know, it, 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 we often get used to the idea of play immediately bishop b1. This is a great example. I think this is a great... This position is already such a valuable lesson. Not to instinctively keep the bishop. To say, you know what? I want that dark money. And I would encourage you guys to push yourself. To, 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 to give up bishop sometime. And, and see what happens. And you gain the other color and lose that color and, and, and see what happens. Get, get, get a little jiggity with, with, uh, with color money exchanges here and call their bluffs and see what happens. See what happens. All right. Knight goes back. B4 is good. Mini bishop. H6. All right. Black is in, it doesn't have too much space. It pushes the pawn up. I don't have too much to do. Maybe, maybe a little luft. Simon Great Luft. Um, again, I think it doesn't just doesn't have much to do. Here we are. H4. He probably also wanted to stop the knight later from getting to G5. Knight here. <coughs> Improve the king. The king acts as. King in the center, but the king acts as. A dark square bishop. A little dark energy. Rook C7, Rook C2. Building little by little. Patient building. This is a good example. I like this game because part of oh, a good chunk of it, there was no color imbalance. So far, we've talked quite a bit about colors when they have imbalances. This is a good example where there's no color imbalance for a chunk of the game. Just building up and still building harmony, still better harmony with the pawns and uh, bishop on light and pawns on dark. Here we are. And, uh, and allowing trades and calling their bluffs. King f8, g4, look how he's getting space, space advantage. This is a nice little example, space advantage. Okay. Bishop f5, bishop e8, 
Knight e2, he's trying to get the knight around, maybe knight here. Black is, is waiting a little bit. Knight b3, trying to get to c5. Notice this is an outpost, and black cannot play b6 because the pawn here. This pawn is stopping the knight, but it's already a weakness as well. These are all bugs. Black does not ha is not happy with where the pawns are. There's no harmony. The bishop is stuck, but more importantly, it's not the bad bishop. It's the fact that he has no harmony, that he has so much light and no dark. Okay, here we are. Knight b6, trying to get the knight in. Knight c5. Says, I don't mind. Black checks. Well, white has to take. What's happened with the color money? Pause, please. And what happens to color money? Okay. The answer is white loses 500 light, but gains 500 dark. And again, there is a lot of weak dark squares. Well, black spawns not help on dark, so he's going to try to take advantage. Let's see. 94. This knight was happy there, but you know what? He wants a better square. Why not move this knight here? Well, then you give this square. So again, this knight is protecting this square, and this knight is getting to the sleeping square. Okay. Knight d6. Get that knight to a good square. And then, and then the knight goes here. Or b8. f5. Look what's happening. Knight's settled in, and now the, the, the bishop is getting... The, the, the mini bishop. Now he plays f5. He's putting his pawns on light. Putting his pawns on light. And breaking in. Why pawns on light? In a way, he's kind of rebuilding on light. Rebuilding. Okay. Why does he have to rebuild? Because he's down on light. So peace on press on dark, pawns kind of part of it at least is rebuilding light aggressively even. Bishop d7, rook f2. Knight d5. Have a little check here. These pawns look good, but they have no future. There's no harmony, no juice. Light bishop, light pawns, and now white's using his energy. And this knight is forever now. Again, it's settled on dark, and white's ahead on dark. And there's nothing that can take it, so that's symbolic of showing off the dark. But in a way, it's also extending onto light. So we'll see that that, that nuance. G5, advancing, just getting those, those babies in. H5, rook F1. Excuse me, guys, just one sec. Okay, here we are. Um, and uh, rook f1. And here we are, again, building on this pawn, building on the file, looking for breaks. This knight is huge. King is going to get active. Let's see it. King here. <coughs> g6. G6. And what's happening with g6? A little spike on light. A little bit of spike. A light spike. And um, if he takes... Taking, I checked, was the, is the best... Good for white. <coughs> he should take a bishop e6, still hanging in there by a thread, but it's um, not pleasant, but it's the best anyway. Instead, he plays f6. Here's the thing. What what color is black challenging white? The dark. But again, white's ahead on dark. Let's see what happens. King, rook e2, he's beginning to, to get the rook active. Open file. Bishop says king f, rook e1 first. Okay, fair enough. And then king f4, the king acts as... A dark bishop. He takes. Nobody would take with a pawn. Now, actually, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Nobody would take with a pawn. But rook takes is even better. Rook takes. Because remember, if he takes a knight, it's bait. All right, here we are. Pawns on light, pieces on dark. Tactically, he's still, he will, now he's starting to take it because there's no mate. 
Knight comes in attacking what color? It's attacking dark, of course. He attacks the rook. No rush. Knight g5. Look at this. Trying to get that easy. If rook takes rook, he takes with a pawn. The knight's coming in about to fork. What color? They hit him on dark, of course. White's using his, his extra dark money. The rookie 7 was played. And we can pause the video here, guys. Here, rookie 7 was a blunder. Pause the, pause the video, and we have, we have two questions. First of all, what was White's move, winning move? And if you extra credit, what is it symbolic of? And we notice rookie 7 is on a dark square. <laughs> so what's, what does White play? <coughs> and the answer is knight h7. Relatively, not too, maybe not too hard to find, but... Very elegant nonetheless. Check. The king goes away. He wins the rook here. Uh, strong player. These are strong players, but the, the saying is blunders come easily in, 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 uh, in bad positions. And here we have that apply. He blunders. Loses the rook, but I think symbolic. It's symbolic here. The king and on dark. The rook's on dark. Knight h7 is showing off the dark muscles. Showing off the dark muscles. So, white one. What happened here again from the beginning? From the beginning, it was it was that dark squeeze, the dark and trading bishops. Very very almost like nothing happened. He just won the game. Trading queens on his turn, king dark bishop, and saying you could trade. I want my dark money. Eventually, it happens anyway, and it, it's just a slow squeeze and using the space with the colors. I think what that's something I want to be focusing on more and more. Space advantage with the color, color money ideas together. Okay. That's one game. Maybe we'll we'll see a little bit of uh, <coughs> we'll see a little bit of um, one more game for today, a little bit, and let's see it. This was a another game by Tarish. Also using space advantage here. Knight f three against G George Marco. Here we are. This is um, Vienna. Oh, the Petro. This happened to Vienna, but this is Petro, Petro's defense. Where take, take, and then d6, get the pawn back. Knight takes. d4, it's alright. d4. Bishop b7, bishop comes out. Alright, bishop b3. Castle. h3, here we are. Stopping the bishop g4. All right. C4. Bishop e6. A little bit clumsy. Where in the white's like, taking chunks of space. Knight, knight g5. Looking to invest. To invest on light. And also to give black a a, uh, a very weak pawn. A bug. Weak pawn of bugs in the dacha. Well, insects. That'll be weak. And... This bishop would become a golden bishop. Black does not allow... Well, black does. Okay, black allows it. Let's see it. Doesn't take yet. Doesn't take yet. That's interesting. Because I think if he takes... This point, he thinks that it might be somewhat solid. Uh, you know, taking... Uh, my opinion, it feels ta taking is probably really good. But he goes knight c3. Okay, now he doesn't want to take. I think, I think by taking, the knight would come out. Pretty strong knight, tickling the dark squares. One of the Russian masters, the Trojan, Spassky, well, the, the, the Botvinnik, these knights here were, were, were kind of swords of the, these knights in the e6, d6, e3, d3. Okay. By the way, I think if knight takes, maybe black would play d5, and the pawns would at least be a mini bishop. He'd lose his bishop. But get a mini bishop. Fair enough. Tarish plays more patient. F4. F4. Getting space. It says, you know what? I don't want that. I don't want the bishop. By taking the bishop. Again, we saw last game about how knights allowing our bishop to be traded. Here we're seeing where so we say, no, 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 no thank you to the bishop. No thank you. <coughs> Maybe even it might have been fine early, earlier, a few moves ago. But... We see how he enjoys the knights. Enjoys. Well, watch how he squeezes the bishop. 
with pawns. We'll see that soon. Um, and by giving up the knight, he it looks fancy at first, but he'd lose dark money. Again, he'd gain light, but lose dark. Not as interested in that. Okay, queen c8, queen c2, light energy. Here we go. f5, f5, tickling the light, put, kicking him back. Bishop f4, getting every piece involved. Pawns at the center. This is light and dark energy together. B3, a mini bishop. D5, notice he doesn't want to take, no need. Beautiful mini bishop, pawns on light. Pawns are on light, and the pieces will dominate, will look to dominate the dark. And light as well, but, but certainly the dark will be white's main focus for now. Black pushes. Black's playing normal, but a little bit passive because he has no space. Knight e2. Notice he does not trade pieces. We're seeing a theme. When have more, when you have more space, you don't you usually do not trade. It's harder for the opponent with less space to move his pieces around. A5. G4. Look to advance eventually. H4. What's the idea of H4? What's he looking for? G5 and F6. Ooh, and then hitting hard on light. The dark, oozing dark with light energy from, from behind. And and he's just waiting for that. Queen D8 saying, no, no, no. You cannot play G5. I'm putting a blockade on the dark squares. Fair enough. Very patient. Notice he doesn't play H5. H5 would be a mistake because then you never get it. G5. Once G5 comes to come. Bishop G3 takes his time. King H1, nice and patient. Rook E1. Knight F4. Building up. The, the, the boils. The, the waters are boiling. Ready. Bishop F6. And now he plays a great move. This is a hint. He's going to go to sleep. White's going to go to sleep. That's the hint. If you guys take a moment to think of the move. What does White play? Beautiful sacrifice, even. And then what he played was knight e6. If pawn forking the queen and rook, topping off all his energies, knights on using the light pawns, but with dark intentions. We say light with dark intentions. Hitting on dark. If he takes, the pawn takes and he wins the knight. And the bishop. Okay. Takes, no problem. Takes the rook. And now he continues. It's beautiful. G5, now it all works. Breaking through tactically, knight takes. Again, g5, trading, and queen h2. Look at zipping right in. No rook is here, and it's just too easy to break in. Queen h8, king g8. Now he takes a knight, and now the bishop is waiting, waiting, waiting to, to, to see the light of day. Waiting for that. And what's the move now? If you guys pause for a moment, how does white break in? This is a lot of tactics, but again, the colors beneath, beneath the surface looking to extend our pawns are in light are always oozing into to topple over to dark with our pieces sometimes our pawns lead the way too and the answer is f6 finally finally using our, our our light bishop to break in g6 and now there's a knockout a beautiful knockout the final light blow finally the bishop has a say the light bishop which was patient pawns on light and there was a lot of dark energy going on with advance of g5. But now the light break is bishop takes g6. He ha he just resigns. Threatening mate. And if he takes an f7. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because he doesn't take... Well, he takes a nice mate. Queen h8 is mate. It's just, just yeah, completely over. Mate. It's just, it's just funny. Funny. The final mate's on the dark. Again, we saw from the, from the very beginning. Like, there's like... like, there's like Unspoken dark below beneath the surface, lots of light, 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 light. But it's like there's like that dark bishop had a big say, and, and we're waiting, waiting for dark. one day to finish him off on dark, one day to break through. Uh, worth of some review. This game, look closely, and uh, hopefully this should be helpful in getting some um, a little bit more feeling for how to use the colors when there's no color imbalance. And also to use it when there's a space advantage. Good seeing you guys. I think next time we'll be continuing with a little more Tarish. Thank you.